Hi everyone, it's <laughs> Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. What have I done? What have I done? This is my own fault. I'm not blaming you fully. I mean, it's my fault for putting the offer on the table, and it's my fault for underestimating how sick you are. Uh, but ultimately, I was the one who put it on the table. So here you go, your reward. <laughs> because there's no Batwomans for the next couple of weeks still. I am going to review Supergirls episode one of season one. Now, I'm just being... I, I am a fair guy, okay? And I, I have to be fair here. There is actually... Some stuff I, I do genuinely like about this episode. There really is. It's a little bit goofy. But it's quaint. And it's a little bit adorable at times. But unfortunately, there is a horrible infection in this. And you can see where we are now because of it. And it's such a shame. Because there's actually some decent moments in this. So we'll get to it. Let's get uh, balls deep, folks. Oh, God, I'd love to be balls deep. Anyway, so uh, it starts off with um, the two pods, which are about to set off from Krypton. Uh, Jarrell gives uh, Kal-El, Clark, whatever you want to call him, a kiss on the forehead and says, uh, My son, one day you will grow up to be Supercuck, world's greatest soy boy. And unfortunately, that does come to pass. And so they send him on his way, and they go, Oi, Kara, we're, we're chucking you in one of these things as well, and you've got to go to Earth and save him. And she's like, don't talk to me, Dad. You're a man. I want to talk to Mammy. She's a whammons. And so she does that, and then she cries, because she's just like, I've never seen the power of a whammon up front until I saw you one. That's how it went. And then she looks at her dad one last time in utter contempt. Ugh men and then she gets cast off into space da, 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 da. just think of the lost in space music and uh, the adventures they had that's what Kara did although she just actually got attached to the prison in the uh, phantom zone and then one day she didn't da -da! so she arrives on earth still a kid because time does not Move forward in the Phantom Zone. However, Clark's been on Earth now for a while. 24 years. So he's 24, 25 years of age here. And uh, he's like, all right, cuz. <laughs> you are still a little girl. I'm a big boy. And I've been saving the world. Then he takes uh, her to a family. And this is really nice. Because on the left, we have Helen Slater. Who is the OG Supergirl from the 1980... I want to say four, 1984 Supergirl film. And then on the right, we've got the wonderful Dean Kane, who played uh, Superman's in The Adventures of Lois and Clark. Although here in the UK, we called it The New Adventures of Superman. That's what we called it. Uh, and uh, it's great. I mean, it's lovely. Uh, but then the uh, producers after 2016, found out that Dean Cain voted for Trump and he was gone. It's true. Uh, so she gets uh, stuck with this family and then, of course, there's the adoptive daughter. And the next time we see her... When this first came out, I would have been quite hard on this, but now I'm actually, uh, you know, older and, and more mellow. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I just wanted to fit in with people. You know, Superman was doing his thing, and I just wanted to fit in. And I was thinking initially, that's a bit selfish, really. You have all this amazing power, and you're not doing anything with it. But then I kind of realized the importance of fitting in. Because I looked at it more from the perspective of, again, adolescence, uh, growing up, and at school, at college, all of those places. Even... Within a working environment, there's a lot of people, and I have done it myself, 
uh, that really wanted to fit in and maybe didn't quite go into a mold that you didn't think fit you. I'm all grown up, folks. I'm scared too. So I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let it slide. And uh, so she, she puts the goofy glasses on because maybe she's just like, Clark does that to hide himself. And I just want to do this to make myself look a little bit, you know, vulnerable because I'm not really. So again, I'm going to kind of forgive the glasses, you know, because some people could be, why did she wear the glasses? She didn't need them. I get it. No, no, I get it. But I think, again, it's part of the whole fitting in culture. Just act a bit goofy because, you know, you're a little bit nerdy. She's a little bit nerdy and that's really endearing about her. And, uh, you know, if you act too pushy, which she does later on in the film, uh, then, of course, uh, some questions might be asked. So she's just trying to fit in. And uh, i got to say that uh, I do have a personal love of Cat Grant. Uh, I was never an Ally McBeal fan. I never, I never got into it. People used to love it, but I never got into it myself. I tried, I couldn't do it. But uh, Calista Flockhart, who is Harrison's Harrison Ford's missus, by the way, uh, she plays an amazing Cat Grant, and I'm so sorry that she left the series after the first season. And if you don't know, uh, this isn't the CW. This isn't airing on the CW. This is airing on CBS. Is it? Is it CBS or I don't? But it's not. It's the one up from CW. It's you know because uh, they wanted a, a superhero show. They wanted to cash in on the superhero craze, and they thought Supergirl could get us some big ass ratings. And it was filmed in LA because it was at CBS. I'm going to say CBS until I'm I, I'm wrong. Uh, so they filmed it in LA and that's where Cleese de Flockhart lived and that's where she wanted to work. And so when it didn't hit the ratings that they wanted to on CBS and fortunately, I mean, I was happy that it got saved by the CW in as much as, uh, it wasn't great, but it could fit in well at the CW and it was at the time where they hadn't gone full infected so you were kind of hoping for some decent storytelling. She could fit in well with uh, with the other cast and stuff. You know, the from the other shows, The Flash and Arrow and whatnot. God, that got fucked up, didn't it? Um, and so they re-moved, uh, relocated, that's the word I wanted, to Vancouver, where they do all the filming for those shows. And Kalista Flockhart didn't want to commute to Vancouver to work so she left the show sad but understandable but sad you know she's a rich woman she don't need this shit <laughs> so it's a shame because she is so biting and so good and uh with all that said and all those compliments given um Wynn is just a fucking pussy I hated this character hated this character and in the first episode, he's not too bad. But this character just... Oh, God, he makes me vomit in my mouth. Ugh. So, Kara acts all goofy. He asks her out on a date. She's like, I can't... I mean, I can't go on a date because I got a date tonight. I went online and there was an app. And this app said that this guy is 82% compatible with me. But it's going to be really awkward when Clark Kent turns up for the date. Ooh! Hey, Kara, fancy some Game of thrones -ings? Ah. So, uh, here comes Kalista as Cat Grant, just absolutely devering the shit out of this character like a boss. I laughed. I laughed a lot. And I laughed because it was funny not laughing at it. She is brilliant as Cat Grant. Just brilliant as a complete narcissistical bitch. <laughs> And I say that with love, Kalista. I say that with love. You were superb as this character. And so she just comes out with all the sharp one-liners, puts down Kara, keeps calling her Kira. And you, and you know she knows she's called Kara, but she just calls her Kira because it just pisses her off and demeans her because Cat Grant is a 
uh, alpha control freak and that's what she does and she's awful and i got uh, awesome and i'm gonna smile on my face because she's fantastic uh so they have a conversation about um tampons i don't know so she says go meet the new guy and it turns out to be uh james olsen and she's like oh my god you're jimmy olsen and he's like james olsen and she went i can't believe it's you and he says why because i've relocated from metropolis to um central city and she says no because you're black <laughs> you 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 you're white normal and he said it's 2015 darling get with the times doesn't make any difference really um but he wants to be called james and he wants to be a different character so I would have just said, why don't you make him a different character? The thing with Jimmy, and the reason why I never gravitated towards Jimmy, is because he's Jimmy Olsen in name only. Because he, he, he first gets introduced, and then she says, oh, you're Jimmy Olsen. And he says, James Olsen. So immediately, he's distancing himself from that character. And then later on, he puts the Guardian armor on from Cadmus Labs and becomes Guardian. Why? Because they were desperately wanting something to do with this character. Because shows like Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, they can't just have people be people. Which is sad. Because when somebody's just a regular person, you could be a great photographer. He could have been a great photographer called something else. You know? And you've got somebody with superpowers who is can do everything better. They can run faster, jump higher, uh, hold the breath longer, laser beams from the eyes, breath, frost breath, all that sort of stuff. It makes for a great dynamic because you are not on parity with each other. But when you start putting armors on people and bringing in X, Y, and Z superheroes, everybody needs to go into parity with one another. Everybody has to be as good as the other person. And everybody loses themselves in a pool of shit. Which is what happens with every fucking CW show. Even though this is CBS at the time. Until I'm proven wrong. It's not CBS has. It's actually CD. Uh, so uh, she's like, ah, am I fit? And he's like, fuck yeah. Sorry. No, that was actually what happened in my head. I was this guy and she was talking to me. And she was like, am I pretty? And I'm just like, oh, the things I would do to you, Melissa. Um, anyway, you didn't hear that. At all. That was that was that was all in my head, and I thought it. Nobody heard a thing. So let's move on. Um, before you realise I've got a chubby. So they they have a chit chat about Superman's and uh, him leaving uh, stuff and him taking a print of Superman for the first time. And he said, actually, Superman posed for this. It looks natural, but he posed for this. That's really good. That's actually really cool because he's sort of like. I didn't catch the moment. We created the moment. Why? It just makes him feel more human. Which is another really annoying factor about why they turn everybody into something else that they're not. Meh. Then uh, Supergirl's sister turns up and she says, Did you know I'm actually straight in this season? <laughs> yes, it makes a return! And she's like, look at my hair. I actually look like a really pretty woman like i am instead of going with lesbian haircut 38462 in the catalog uh so she's just like oh what's going on chucky egg and she's like stuff and she's like cool and there's not much going on well they're talking about the date and getting some clothes and shit you know they're just shooting their shit so she turns up for the uh the date with um captain Whitebread. And he's a bit of a prick. And then he's just like, oh, I gotta go and do a thing. And then he just leaves and says, can I have the check? Oh, by the way, to, it says to the woman at the the exit, make sure that you've got your name, your phone number on that check. And she and Kara listens in with her super hearing. And she's just like, ugh, men. 
By the way, there is something in this episode which is the funniest thing ever, but we'll get to it. So, um, what part of the conversation that Shadow was sister was her sister's flying to Genève, Geneva, and uh, she's flying out on the plane, so see you later, sis. And then, on the television, we saw that the plane engine had exploded, and the plane was in trouble. Sakara, so who's hid her powers up until now, and she's what? She's, I think she's meant to be about 25, 26 in this series so um maybe maybe even 23 maybe even 23 i don't know it's somewhere around there it's just like i got to i got to save my sis i got to save my adopted sister who was actually straight in season one she wanted a bit of maxwell lords pee pee uh so she she tries to jump into the air and fly she doesn't get it right at first time which is which is good and then she uh, managed to get the hang of it. So she flies up to the plane. And this is actually well done. Yeah, it's a complete copy of the Superman. Pretty much the Superman thing. But it's really well done. Uh, she she grabs the plane. She tries to steer it. She seems to be doing okay. So she's like, oh, this is, this is easy. I can do this. And uh, then she kind of like struggles. You realize that she's struggling. And it's just like, this is good. This is actually good. You know, not everything's easy for her. She's 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 trying to get the right pressure. You know, that her hands don't go flying through the the metal. And it's a bit heavier than she thought she'd be, be in. You know, so it's actually well done. It's not just like, eh, eh, I'm a woman. You know, like Batwoman. And then she's like, oh, for fuck's sake. There's a fucking bridge in the way. So she's like, oh, bugger me. So uh, she has to turn the plane onto its side to get it safely through the bridge. She's struggling again. She, you can see her getting a grip and buckling the uh, metal. It's good. It's well done. And uh, she scrapes the uh, the arm of the plane, the the arm, the wing of the plane, <laughs> fucking arms, uh, across the road. Causes a little bit of damage. Crashes into the water. Everyone's safe. She's pooped. God bless her. I'll dry you if you want me to stop it. Stop it, as. And then she uh, she gets up and she's feeling happy and proud of herself again. That's fine. She did a thing. She saved the sister. She saved the plane, and it's the first time she's used her powers. She's excited. She's young. I'm okay with this. This is fine. It's a normal reaction. Supergirls. So uh, she's she's watching the news, trying to get uh, you know. A bit of an ego boost, an ego rub. It's the first time she's done this. Again, I'm okay with that. It feels more akin to her being more human at the moment than super. Because that's how she's lived her life. So uh, affirmation, praise, all that sort of stuff is nice. It is a nice ego massage. Then her sister turns up and she's just like, Ah! Did you see what I did? I saved the day! And her sister's just like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. And then um, she's like, I need a drink. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to get shit-faced, even though it doesn't affect me, but never mind. And she's all giddy and excited. And then her sister's just like, you have shown who you are to the world. And you're kind of feeling like she's been a bit of a cow here. And she is. And she admits later on that she is. You know, and she says, you have exposed yourself. People now, now know that you're out there. You're not the only one. Uh, you know, Superman isn't the only one that can have these powers. What if you get brought in, tested on, stuff like that? And you think, you know, it's maybe stretching it, considering Superman does his thing. But sisterly concern? Uh, yeah. Or is there something else? And it actually turns out there's something else, which is cool. Because... She shows that she's flawed. So she gives her a bit of dressing down and she's a bit sad about it all. And she's just like, why are you being such a cow? And she's like, Fuck you, I'm out of here. So she, she's like upsets her sister. So she goes to work and she, because she didn't get that ego boost and, and gratification from her sister, she can't keep it inside of her. Oh God, I would keep it inside of Stop it, as. She can't keep it inside of her, so she needs to, to tell somebody. So she's like, Wynn, uh, you are the friendest of friend zones that there'll ever be. And he's like, fuck. 
Uh, come, come to the roof because I've got something I need to tell you. So he's like, uh, okay, let's go on the roof. Let's go on the roof. And uh, she's, this is, this is the bit which I thought was so funny. In 2020, this is hilarious. For the Supergirl show, this is hilarious. For the CW, this is hilarious. She says, Winner got something to tell you. And he's like, okay. He's like, I've been living a lie. I have been pretending that I'm somebody that I'm not. And he's just like, oh, you're a lesbian. <laughs> and then that's not the punchline. The punchline is Kara says, no, I'm not gay. <laughs> On the CW, saying that you're not gay. It's so good. <laughs> oh, I could have that. I'm going to have that on my phone. Every time somebody texts me, it's just going to go, I'm not gay. So, uh, Kara, it's, it's just like, no, I'm not gay. I'm a super heroes. And he's like, whatever. So she's like, I'm going to throw myself off this roof to prove it. He's like, what the fuck? And then she comes flying back in. And lands on the roof, and she's like, da-da! And he's like, okay. So, um, Owen, I can't remember what his surname is. He used to be in The Mentalist. Uh, used to be in The Mentalist, and uh, he's just like, oh, I'm not in The Mentalist anymore, but, and I really need some acting work, so I'm going to take a bit role on Supergirls. And he uh, he sees that uh, she's out and about, and he contacts his mate, and his mate's like, sup, dude, do you want to watch the game on Saturday? He's like, I can't watch the game. Kara's a well is in the We gotta kill the girl. Cause I'm a space misogynist. He is, he's a space misogynist. Part of the infection that's creeping in. Oh my god. My favourite part of the show. <laughs> Less win, more Kara. Uh so uh, Kara tries on some outfits to be Supergirl in. So first outfit is... Can we go back? Stop. Go back, please. So this is a bit of a mixture of the 1980s Supergirl. She's got the red headband, which is a... Uh... Sorry, I'm really distracted. Uh, she's got the red headband, which is the uh, signature of the 80s Supergirls. She's got the Lycra pants, which are, I can't remember any Supergirl being in Lycra pants, but that thigh gap, though, oh my god. Uh, which is lovely. I'm going to have to pause the video and just... I need, I need to water the flowers. Okay. Right. No, 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 no. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. I've got. I've still got the gym diary to edit. Then she puts this outfit on, which is a little bit more like the outfits that she's going to wear. It's got a dress instead of um, camel toe. And uh, she's... Uh, you know, she's got this more kind of plasticky... Um, you know, uh, top, but no... <sighs> Uh, S on her chest at the moment. That's what I was trying hard to say. So she goes out and she's just like, can we find out if you're bulletproof or not? I think. No. She's like, I, I'm going to have a fly about in a car chase. And then um, they've got no cape. And so she just goes flying into a wall. And he's just like, oh, that's why they wear the, he wears the cape. It's good for aerodynamics. All right. That doesn't quite work in reality. But sure. Why not? It's cute. Whatever. Uh, are you bulletproof? So she turns up at a bonk and uh, she gets shot and she, and she says the day again. It's quite cool. She's just like, yep, I'm bulletproof. Tell you what, that's a hell of a way to find out though. Because if you weren't bulletproof, this would have been the shortest run of a hero ever. And uh, then uh, I think we get the S. Do we get the S then? Yeah, she comes out in the final costume. This is the, this, this costume is lovely. You know, this costume is really nice. I'm so sad that she's not in it now. She looks feminine, but it's not slutty or anything like that. Um, you know, she's got black tights on. She's not giving thigh. 
You know, her ankles are covered, so all the Victorian gentlemen have, you know, they're not going to lose their shit. Uh, and it just looks good. Now, of course, she's in blue pants because she's a man. Because if a man can wear pants, I can wear fucking pants. Whatever. So this is really cute. You look feminine. You look gorgeous. And uh, it still looks plenty functional. But uh, fuck that, hey, in present day. And Wynn's just like, I'm a side boy. So uh, Hank, Gre Hank Henshaw. I was going to say Hank Green. Hank Henshaw. Who's not Hank Henshaw. Hank, Hank Henshaw is actually Cyborg Superman. But they took the Hank Henshaw name, even though this actually turns out to be John Johns, the Martian Manhunter. John Jones. John Johns. John. John Johns. Whatever. The Martian Manhunter. Uh, but I, I, I think it, they gave him Hank Henshaw because they're trying to lead you down the path because his eyes go red and it's just like, oh my God, he's the Cyborg Superman, even though he's black which again wouldn't make sense but never mind uh and then when they did do the cyborg superman storyline <laughs> no 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 moving on uh he's just like hey uh, we've just shot you out the sky with some kryptonite bullets which is real fucking shitty of you by the way could have just asked your sister to bring her in uh here's your spaceship we think you're a bitch and uh we're gonna keep her on you and if you take if you put one foot wrong gonna stick a kryptonite uh, spear in your ass and she's just like could have just said hi so we get the story of how she detached herself from the uh, prison but unfortunately she dragged the prison along and she dragged it to earth the prison crashed all the prisoners are let loose around earth it's all your fault cara you dopey cow and she's just like fucking hell this guy is nasty and he's just like yeah i don't like aliens but he is an alien but 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 it's another euphemism for in the closet and uh, so she says, hey, Hank, did I get the job at the, the DEO because Kara was my sister? And he said, yes, yes, you did. And she's like, fuck. <laughs> but then he said, but you kept it because of who you are. And she's like, yay. So um, Kat calls uh, Supergirl Supergirl. She brands her, which is really good. I like that because Kat is just thinking about money. <laughs> I've branded Supergirl. Whenever anyone does hashtag Supergirl or talks about Supergirl, it's going to be synonymous with Catco because I'm the one who put it out there to Twitter and everyone's going with it. And so people are going to start coming to, to us because of the marketing generated from it. It makes good sense. It does make good sense. And uh, it's great that Cat is just a pragmatist that's interested in boosting business, revenue, monies. Boom. Because Cat Grant is actually really good in this show really good a proper strong woman not a fake strong woman like they do a proper strong woman a woman who knows exactly what she wants is intelligent enough to do it by really clever means not by those means and so she's like why did you call her supergirl that's bollocks she's a woman and, and Kat's just like, this is what I really loved, actually, because she's given it all. Uh, this is so anti-feminine. She does say it's anti-feminine, uh, anti-feminist, anti-feminine, not anti-feminine. It's anti-feminist to call a Supergirl, not Superwoman. And uh, she has a right rant at Kat. And Kat's just like, um, Kira, <laughs> probably because she keeps calling Kira. I'm a girl. I'm a girl. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm a girl. I'm a strong girl. I'm a great girl. I do this, I do that. But, you know, and she fucking destroys Kara. And then she says, oh, uh, Jimmy, why have you interrupted? Because I am just in a really well-worded dismissal right here. Because she's going to fire her. And it's really, really good. So Jimmy thinks on his feet. He's just like, ah, actually, we got... Uh, a really clear image of Supergirl for the paper, and Kara got it. So she's like, oh, okay. All right, Kara, you did all right. You did well. You keep your job for one more day. And, she, she, and he's just like, and she's like, <laughs> and he's like, meet me on the roof. I know that you're Supergirls. And he's just, she's like, what? And then he's just like, I'm a space misogynist. And then uh, Supergirl's just like, oh my God, I've got to fight something first. Actually, I think I might have jumped the gun on that. So she's like, hey, space misogynist, I'm here to hit you. And he's just like, oh, no, you're not. And he absolutely beats the living shit out of her. 
beats the living shit out of her, throws her through everything, smacks her face in, throws an axe, cuts her arm, and the D.O. has to come and save her. And she's just like, oh my god, I'm weak, I'm feeble, and Hank's like, you're weak, you're feeble, get out of here, wench. Get out of here! You're no good. And then the sister's like, this is a good scene. Another good scene now. Her sister's like, Kara, open up. She's like, no, go away, poopy pants. And she's like, look, the reason why I always told you not to reveal yourself to the world was because you came into my life and my family and I was the big sister and then you were the one who arrived and you had all these powers. And I felt inferior to you. And so the only way that I knew how to feel special, more important, or superior, was to try and keep you down. And it was selfish, and it was horrible of me. And you're like, holy shit. They, they did a human. They did a human thing with a human. Who knew the CW and writers could actually do that once in a while? This, this is not CW, though. This is CBS, until I'm told otherwise. It's not CBS, it's CB. B D. Uh, and so she's like, all right, okay, sis, I forgive you. Let's scissor. Um, so anyway, um, she gives her a cube and it's got a hologram of her mum and her mum's just like, I got blown up. <laughs> I'm in danger. So Hank's just like, oh, okay, you brought her back in, have you? And she's like, yes. And they said, okay, we've located the guy. And uh, Kara's like, give me a chance to fight him. I'm going to fight him. This is where we get a little, bit, a little bit more of the infection. There's been a little bit more of the infection coming in here. Because they're like, oh, he thinks he's fighting a girl. Oh, well, we'll show him that women's can be powerful. And Hank's just like, oh, shut the fuck up, woman. Uh, so they're like, right, use your heat vision on his axe and it'll blow up. And so she does. And then she's like, it's not working. And she says, make it work so it works. And she blows him up, and this guy's like, fuck that, I've just lost a Supergirl, I'm going to stab myself in the chest. And he does. And they all celebrate. And they all cheer, and they're just like, yay, an alien killed himself. Woohoo! So, this is where Jimmy says, uh, meet me on the roof, Supergirl. And she's like, what? So she goes up on the roof, and, it, and he's like, actually, I always knew you were Supergirl. Well, you, you were special, because Clark told me I wanted to branch out. By the way, the funny thing is, Superman is, is spoken about really respectfully in this episode. The way that he's always referred to is, is always very respectfully indeed. It's so funny that when they brought him to the show, they completely neutered him. Cut his balls off, turned him into a soy boy. Unbelievable. Never mind. And he's like, yeah, I wanted to spread my wings, but Clark said, why didn't you spread your wings in Central City or whatever, wherever she's, I don't know, wherever she is. And uh, just kind of maybe keep a little eye on my sit and my cousin and see how she's doing. So she's like, oh, and he's like, he gave you a, a, a box, and in the box has got the super cape. And she goes, because mm -hmm. she's happy. And uh, yeah, then she goes up, up and away. And he's like, I'm never gonna have sex with you. She says, I know. And then it ends with her uh, her aunt saying, oh, she's a poopy pants. I'm going to kill her. The end. So uh, there we go, folks. Holy shit, 33 minutes. Well, I did waffle on about certain things. The show had some good moments. It legitimately had some actual human moments uh, before all the infestation of this shit identity politics that we have today. Just laden full of stuff like that. And it was fun in some moments as well. But as I said, you could see... There were those moments, there were those lines that kept it coming in here, there, and everywhere. I'm a woman, gotta be a woman, it's a woman, there's the woman. The, the infection was already too deep, and it was too difficult to stop. R.I.P. C.W. Uh, so there we go, hope you enjoyed the bonus video. If you do, do get a thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live strumming links. They're in the description box down below, and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.
description box down below and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now. Boom.